Hello my friends, in this video we will be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a Central African pastoralist from Kenya. Now you have seen some Kenyan pastoralists on this channel and let me promise you this, this much, this individual is nothing like these other Kenyan pastoralists. He may be a pastoralist, but in terms of his ethnicity he is very different from them. He is very sub-Saharan African, he does not have uh, any admixture from the Middle East, unlike the other Kenyan pastoralists, which are basically half Natufian. So first, let's look at his results, uh, his haplogroup. His haplogroup uh, for Y-DNA is E1B, and his mitochondrial lineage is L4B. Uh, when he, did he live in terms of the time period? We see that he lived 84 to 211 uh, years common era. So he lived in the common era. Common era. Uh, this is the Roman period in uh, the Middle East and Europe, but he uh, was not a part of the Roman Empire. Roman Empire did not um, stretch that far south. So in terms of the GED match results, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K36, and this is very, very obviously different from uh, what you would expect to see with a, um, uh, with a uh, Kenyan pastoralist, very, very different, because he's not scoring any Middle Eastern components, he's entirely Sub-Saharan African. 28% uh, Amotic, which is kind of like a East African group that's native to Kenya. 27% Pygmy, which is very random. I don't really know how he's scoring uh, over a quarter Pygmy, but apparently he has some Pygmy affinities as well. 24% East African, so this is once again an East African component, just like an Omotic. 16% uh, Central African, which I guess makes sense because he's located quite close to the Congo. And... 3% South Chinese and 0.6 Oceania, and we can ignore that. Uh, so he's essentially entirely Sub-Saharan African, and he does not have any Middle Eastern or Natufian admixture that is typical for Kenyan pastoralists. So he's definitely a alternative type of Kenyan pastoralist. So we're going to go ahead and look at his ethnic calculator results with my trade predictor. And here he shows up as being closest to Shamlaka, followed by African Americans. Um, group 1 is actually a more... European admixed African American group, followed by Mota, Ethiopian hunter gatherer, followed by Tafaraut, which is a Eurasian group actually, followed by Hoi Sun hunter gatherer, African American too, which is more of a pure uh, sub Saharan African group of African Americans, followed by that is Tafaraut once again, different individual, followed by that is Kenya Pastorius Neolithic I12533. So he's very, very distant to this Kenyan Pastorius Neolithic, and he's very, very similar to Shamlaka. So he's definitely very sub Saharan African. And he does not have this Natufian, uh, Natufian admixture that is very signature for Kenyan pastoralist Neolithic, Neolithic pastoralist from Kenya, which is very interesting. So in terms of the uh, Nashakot and what he looks like, let's explore that a little bit right now. And it looks like he's got darkest brown eyes. He's got 63.3% likelihood of darkest brown eyes. There's a little bit of a likelihood for brown eyes as well. And he definitely does not have any eye color lighter than brown. So for example, even hazel. There is only 2% likelihood of that. For hair color, looks like his hair color is definitely black. He does not have any hair colors lighter than black. That's out of the picture completely. So he's definitely got black hair. It looks like he's got dark brown skin. Although light brown skin is also sort of possible as well. He most likely has dark brown skin. And for hair texture, it looks like he has got kinky hair. A very typical phenotype for somebody who is a sub-Saharan African to score kinky hair. Dark brown skin, black hair, and dark brown eyes. Very typical phenotype for a sub Saharan African. Uh, let's see, is there anything unusual in his DNA in terms of the um, SNPs? So it looks like he does not have BH3, no BH2, no BH1. None of the blue eye haplotypes. Uh, he does have two light color variants in this variation of ASIP, which actually contributes to lighter pigmentation of skin, which is definitely quite interesting. And it's very uncommon for sub Saharan Africans to have. Two light color variants in Svedation of Asip as well. It's definitely a very Eurasian kind of a phenotype. And and um, yeah, there's just not much interesting here. Okay, what about the uh, phenotype Oracle? Let's look at that. So the closest phenotype to him is this, which is very interesting. Followed by that is this, which uh, the first one is actually an East African phenotype. So I guess the East African phenotype is closer to him than the West African one. And the third phenotype is this West African phenotype, but with a narrower nose. And for the 
two-way mixed mode Oracle. He seems to be getting modeled as a mixture of various uh, various Native American people with Sub-Saharan Africans, with darker types of Sub-Saharan Africans. So he's lighter in terms of his color than uh, you know typical for Sub-Saharan Africans. Essentially, that's why he's scoring the way he is. And for the twelve-way Oracle, you can see eight point three percent this plus eight point three percent this plus sixteen percent this. 16% this, 25 this, 25 this. If you add all of these together, you will get a phenotype that sort of resembles him. So there is actually some uh, Eurasian traits that he's that he's got, which is definitely very interesting. Uh, now we're going to look at his polygenic risk scores and biomarkers. So for the polygenic risk scores, it looks like he's got a spot-on average risk of stroke. He's got below average odds of male pattern hair loss, which is very typical for somebody who is a sub-Saharan African. They have below average odds of that. And if you're a European, this number will be a lot higher. Uh, nothing relevant was found for atrial fibrillation or deep vein thrombosis. It looks like he's got an increased odds of bipolar type 1 and increased odds of schizophrenia. All right, which is also quite common for sub-Saharan Africans. It looks like he's got above average odds for type 2 diabetes, pretty much spot on average, and definitely very increased odds of Alzheimer's. Uh, actually quite high risk score for Alzheimer's here. Uh, he's got a below average odds of multiple sclerosis, two risk variants for breast cancer out of 10, which is quite typical, five for testicular cancer out of 16, which is also quite typical, actually kind of low. Uh, one risk variant for celiac disease out of eight, which is also typical. GSS, nothing relevant was found. For Crohn's disease, it looks like nothing relevant was found. For Reifenstein syndrome, looks like nothing relevant was found. And for Parkinson's, it looks like zero risk variance here. Once again, that's really good. So now let's go ahead and see what he scores for the biomarkers. And for the biomarkers, it looks like he's got a slightly above average level of vitamin D, which is really good to see. A slightly below average level of LDL cholesterol, which is um, also good to see. Below average level of HDL cholesterol, which is not so good to see, but then again, he is still sort of in the healthy range. Uh, for glucose, he's got slightly above average level of glucose levels. So that, that is uh, a little bit unfortunate. For hemoglobin, it looks like he's got spot on average level of hemoglobin. Okay, that's pretty good. And he's got slightly above average level of blood pressure, slightly above average predisposition to high blood pressure. Let's put it this way, which is kind of a little bit concerning, but also not really because. Um, things that contribute to problems that arise from blood pressure, such as stroke or uh, myocardial infraction. Those issues tend to happen when you live a sedentary lifestyle, and he probably did not live a sedentary lifestyle at all. So pro probably not that big of a deal for him. For level of iron in blood, spot on average, once again, really good. And actually, now let's check his, uh, his blood type. So let's scroll to the very bottom of the page. Uh, we're going to see his blood type. His blood type is type A. All right, so he's got type A blood type. Definitely very interesting. It's uncommon. Most people have type O, but he's got type A. All right. Well, that's pretty much all I had to show you for this individual. Thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe. Also, you can download this file in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.